you get mentioned in my name. We don't like what you say. I don't give a fuck. Y'all can suck my dick. Okay, in the last demo related to invalidation and eviction from the cache, what we're going to look at is some SP configure changes for your server. So we're also going to be setting these back at the end of this. So the first thing I want us to make sure is set on your server is show advanced options. So if I do an SP configure show advanced, this makes sure that I can see all of the advanced options for configuration, which for me it was set, so this really isn't changing anything but some of you might need to do the reconfigure statement. Now, having said that, I'm going to do SP configure to see what my current settings are across all of the different options. And the one that we're specifically looking for is going to be the cost threshold for parallelism. So I'm going to execute and I'm going to find cost threshold for parallelism. And you can see right now that that version is set to 10 for my instance. Now, usually the default value is 5. So some of you will probably have a default value of 5. It it doesn't really matter what you want to change it to, you just have to change it to a different value. So we're going to make note of our value, which is 10, and then we're going to either set it back to that or change it. You'll want to set it back to whatever the value is that it's running at right now. Now we're also going to do a quick read of our error log, because I want to show you what's happening in there with some of your SP configure changes. So now, if I look at this, and I scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see that configuration option, show advanced options, let me widen this, okay, show advanced options was changed, and we reconfigured. So we are getting some insight that a configuration option was changed. Now if I go look at procedure plans, since we had a procedure in cache a while ago, we should end up seeing something here. but. I had reset my compatibility mode. So just to prove this, I'm going to execute back to get charges so that we have a plan in cache. And then I'll go ahead and I'll show you how running show advanced and reconfigure and SP configure, none of these things actually cleared the cache. But we'll just go ahead and run that so that you know that that's slightly different just because I changed the demo when I was going through it but cost threshold for parallelism I didn't change anything yet but I did set show advanced I did run reconfigure I looked at my error log notice that it does show that I changed this twice so I did go through the process of setting this even though I really haven't changed it and having said that this did not affect my plans that are in cache. Okay, so this particular configuration, show advanced, doesn't do anything to the cache. All right, but now let's change one that does. So we're going to change cost threshold for parallelism. Now, mine's set to 10. Yours is probably set to, to 5. I want you to change it to something that's higher or lower, it really doesn't actually matter, than what you have now, but you want to remember what it was set to. So mine was 10, I'm going to set it to 9 in this case. So I'm going to do an SP configure cost threshold for parallelism, and you can see it tells me here it was changed. It says run reconfigure to install. Let's just see what the state of our plans are right now. And notice that that plan for get charges is still in the cache. So it doesn't seem like changing my cost threshold for parallelism affected the plans. If I go look at the error log, what's interesting here is it shows me that the configuration option was set. But remember the message, let me widen that, remember the message, it says configuration option has been changed from 10 to 9, run reconfigure to install. If, you, if you're not familiar with this, if you just run SP configure, if you just run SP configure, there's a configuration value that is not the currently running value. It's the reconfigure statement which kicks that in and makes it the running value. So notice what happens here. We just checked our procedure plan and it's there, right? But if I, and we looked at our error log, I don't need to, to show you anything there. Okay, but I go and I say reconfigure, execute. This is what's really interesting. And, and we can see this in two ways. We'll start by looking in the error log. So we'll look at the very bottom. Notice there's three new statements here. Let me scroll over, widen this a bit. Okay, so what we have is SQL Server is encountered. 
basically a cache store flush for the object plans, the SQL plans, and the bound trees. These are the messages that they started giving us as of SQL 2005 SP2 to let us know that the entire server's cache was flushed. So important to know that because you might not want to be making some of these changes on a production server at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning. And sure enough, if I go check the procedure plans, yeah, they're all gone. I mean, I didn't have much going on right now, so on my machine, it's no big deal. If I run something again, like get charges with 4567, I will get a new plan specifically for 4567. And interestingly, on my machine, I lowered the cost threshold for parallelism, and it turns out it was just enough to make that second statement parallelize. So, you know, it's interesting what will be impacted. And, and sure enough, this makes sense that the plans had to be invalidated because we got a different plan because of the parallelism change. So it does make sense. It does make sense. Now, if I go look at procedure plans, I've got that plan in cache, but just one plan because everything else had been cleared. And now what I want you to do is set it back to either the default, which is five, or if you had changed it on your machine to something else and you want it to go back to that value, then set it back to that value. Now I'm going to go ahead and run this. And again, it's not this, it's the reconfigure that all of a sudden, right, kicks those plans out, they're all gone, and if I run another one, I'd get a new plan and so forth, but I just wanted you to see that. Now, having said that, we're all done with our demo. The last thing I want you to do is get rid of that extended event session so that it's not tracking recompiles for the credit database anymore. So we'll execute, and we're all done with all of our levels of invalidation.